What's up YouTube, I'm Mike and today I have never been so happy in my life to admit defeat. I have been attempting to conquer uh, mint acetate for a, for, for a month and, and, and about a week now. I started mint on July the 7th and excuse me on June the 7th and it is now July 16th and my D game is still not recovered. My estrogen levels are still not recovered. I have been doing all kinds of crazy stuff to my body trying to get this this compound to work and it is just not working. I mean, it's working, I guess. It's doing something. My aesthetic is phenomenal. I have gained weight. But the problem is that I have so many compounds in the mix, it's nearly impossible to do to, to give mint the credit for anything. The only thing the mint has definitively done is jack my estrogen through the roof and completely break my D game. That's the only thing that I can definitively say caught was hap happened after I got up, uh, up to a higher dose of mint. So as far as the actual weight that I've gained, I can't I cannot truly place that at the feet of mint because I'm also on the highest total amount of androgens that I've ever I've ever been on. I was stuck at 210 pounds even with the mint in my system for over a week before I started raising my androgen levels and getting my estrogen to come down. The point where I finally decided to admit defeat here is I am now on seven milligrams of a Remedex per day and I still have high E2 and broke D symptoms. It is progressively getting better every day. Because it is progressively getting better every day, there is the hope that if I stay at seven milligrams and I don't change any other any other aromatizable compounds in my in my protocol, that I will get to an, a normal E2 level. It's possible that if I give my body enough time for the 500 milligrams of test to run back down to 300 milligrams of test, then maybe I could start taking some of the AI out um, and so that I would be on, on less of a total AI dose. But we still have nandrolone in the mix that I don't want to get rid of. I don't really want, want to run completely out of testosterone because I do not buy into the idea that is being stated that because mint is so androgenic, you don't need dihydrotestosterone. I call complete bullshit on that. Why, why would you not need any dihydrotestosterone in your system? This idea of mint monotherapy to me is the single stupidest fucking thing I have ever come into contact with. How in the world mint monotherapy? And the thing is, it's clearly not just me that feels this way. A, a bunch of people who are infinitely smarter than I am, who had a lot to gain financially by the success of this drug, tried to use mint monotherapy and failed. And I do not believe they failed purely because they wouldn't go up high enough on the dose. The, the, the recommended therapeutic top end of the range was 800 micrograms, which, which was in most cases not sufficient to supply enough estrogen uh, to keep these guys completely physiologically functional. And so the number one complaint I meant to begin with is exactly what I'm experiencing. Low libido and crash D gain. This is, this is why they never brought this drug to market. They never brought this drug to market in, in any context because it does not work. That's just the facts of the matter. We're trying to make something work uh, in, a, in an application that it just doesn't work in. Especially to me, I am now of the opinion that Trestalone meant is maybe the single worst bodybuilding drug uh, or the worst drug ever even attempted to put into a bodybuilding cycle. Because very, 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 very few people who are in the bodybuilding community are going to be running little to no amount of testosterone. Every cycle any bodybuilder ever runs has a test base in it. And so unless the entire bodybuilding community wants to completely jump ship to my idea where you take all of your aromatizable compounds out and you replace them with things like Trin or Deca and then you, you, you put back in uh, DHT through the use of like Proviron and then you inject yourself with estrogen, unless you're just going to completely turn the entire bodybuilding world upside down and start doing basically everything that's been tried and true for 20, 30, 40 years or more, uh, unless everyone is going to get on that bus, 
then mint is completely useless in a bodybuilding context. It's totally fucking useless. There's no way you can manage all the sides. Most pro bodybuilders are running substantially higher doses of testosterone than I am. They run substantially higher doses of nandrolone than I do. They have EQ in the mix with AI effects. There's all kinds of stuff going on. There's a reason why you don't see guys running D-ball for long periods of time. And it's not just hepatotoxicity. It's because the 17 alpha methyl estradiol is totally unmanageable. There's a reason why no pro bodybuilders are using drugs that aromatize into estrogens that we cannot test for. There's just no clear way to ever know what's truly going on in your body. You have to attempt everything by feel and if this experiment has proved anything, it's that trying to, to estimate estrogen and prolactin levels by feel is absolutely poking around in the dark. It's a fool's errand. It's way too easy to miss the proper signs and symptoms. And so the reason Cavalser was, was able to accurately predict that my estrogen was sky high was just based on the science itself. Because he knew the aromatization rates of all the drugs that I was on, so there was basically no way that I could have low E2. Maybe had I not let my E2 get as high as it did, we would be in a different scenario. The reason that I don't think that is true is because I've had higher estrogen than this before. I've had my E2 level go all the way to 179. When that happened, it did not break my D game and it only took um, like a, a four days to a week for me to knock it back down. And I didn't take anywhere near seven milligrams of Rimidex. So here I am with uh, E2 that for the, for the past week has only been 20 points out of the top into the reference range. And I'm eating a Rimidex like Skittles and still have full blown gyno and broke D game. This is a disaster. And at some point, you have to you have to be big enough to say, I am not going to continue destroying my body, risking risking permanent gyno, which is what I've been doing this entire time that I have a, I've had high E2 screwing around with this stupid drug. I have been risking adding more permanent gyno to my body than I already had. So I have gained some weight, yes. I, I reached a new high of 218 pounds. If I pulled mint out of my cycle and I totally stopped gaining weight and I dropped back down to 215, for example, then I will have I, all I will, I will have nothing to have shown for this. Even if I stay at 218 once I take the mint out of the cycle, which I 100% believe that I can do, then what did I really gain? I gained fucking nothing. I'm already huge. I'm already I'm already more than big enough for my for my for what I'm trying to do in life. I'm about to turn 44 years old. I weigh 218 pounds with six very very cut visible abs and I've been perma blasting now for 30 35 40 weeks. At some point any remotely intelligent person has to say enough is enough. I've been putting my wife through hell and high water for a fucking month with this cycle and putting myself through it. I mean, she's not the one complaining. It's me. Having a, ha having a happy, healthy, functional sex life is like half of the reason that I use anabolics. I've been saying this for years on my channel when guys ask like, what is this weird cycle you're running? You got mad, you got cutting drugs, and bulking drugs. And I've been saying the reason that I choose the compounds that I choose is because they give me the aesthetic that I want, the joint support that I want, the performance in the gym that I want, and the performance in the bedroom that I want. I want all four of those variables. If you take the performance in the bedroom out of the equation, I do not give a shit if this combination would get me to 300 pounds lean and I was the biggest man to ever step on stage and I could win multiple Olympias from 44 to 50. I do not want that if it costs me the ability to have happy, healthy, functional sex with my wife. It, it Nothing else is worth that to me in life. And so today is, it, today is the, the day that I stop the bleeding. So I already, before I made this decision, unfortunately pinned fit my first dose of, of, of mint at 15 units, which is 7.5 milligrams. I'm going to just slowly, every day, take the mint out of my cycle because I don't want 
any kind of, any kind of crazy. I was feeling so crappy coming down off that uh, off the mint that I don't want to uh, I don't want to go through that for a week or however long it takes to get out of my system. So I'm probably going to just reduce the dose by. Basically, I'm taking 30 units of mint a day. So I pinned 15 units this morning. I'm probably going to pin like 12 or 13 units this evening. Then tomorrow morning, I'll get up and I'll pin, you know, say 10 units. And then just bring the units down like that. Uh, whatever feels comfortable. Um, and get this out of my system within a week, hopefully. Uh, so what we're going to have, almost certainly, is an E2 crash scenario. Because I'm, I'm taking a gigantic amount of Arimidex. I'm about to start pulling a compound out that is clearly aromatizing at a high rate. And so I'm probably going to crash somewhere in here. But I, I, it, it, at this point, I have got to get back to a state of normalcy. So I'm going to put all the variables back where they were, more or less. I'm gonna put the aromatizable compounds back to a state that I know works. So I, I, I lowered my test dose again, like an idiot trying to save this mint. I'm probably gonna to try to get back to 500 milligrams of test C. I'm gonna leave the Primo in at 400 milligrams. I, enjoy, I upped my master on last night to 500 milligrams. I'm probably going to leave that there. The Nandrolone is currently at 300 milligrams. I may take that down to 200 because that's where I was at before. That's one of the aromatizable compounds. And then I'm slowly going to, oh, the trend is going to stay at 100 milligrams. And then the, 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 the mint is going to slowly come out of the equation here. So effectively, I may have gained three pounds uh, had had a, about a, a month and a week of miserable sex and spent uh, almost $300 on something that I'm almost certainly going to throw in the fucking toilet at this point or throw in the trash at this point. I just can't see um, why I would ever use it again. Maybe if I got stable on all this stuff and got everything in my life back on track and I crashed my estrogen easily, I could add five milligrams of mint back in for some reason that I fully don't understand because I don't think it actually does anything special at all. Um, you know, Trend does something special. Trend gives you the Trend God confidence. It gives you an amazing aesthetic. It gives you incredible strength. It gives you like absolute freakish level of, of a libido. Basically, in my estimation, everything that there is about Trend just makes it the best drug on earth. DECA has a lot of really positive effects. I'm still trying to figure out what mint's claim to fame is. What exactly is it in a bodybuilding context that mint specifically does? It doesn't give you great confidence. My, my confidence is actually down relative to normal. Um, it doesn't give me any intense aggression. It doesn't give me any intense libido. It's not lubricating my joints. It, it, as far as I can tell, the mint has done nothing good for me other than maybe uh, have dried my physique out or, or, or given me a different body composition. Maybe. Maybe. I, I can't even tell because it doesn't even make any sense. Why would I be dry looking and have estrogen that's topped the twice into the reference range? That's just totally nonsensical. And all of the claims that, well, the Masteron is offsetting the mint or is offsetting the high E2. No, it's not because I have gyno just flared up out of control right now. In my, in, in my pose down video that I posted a couple of days ago, again, if you look when I move my arms up, my nipples just jiggle in that video. You can just see the fucking nipples suspended on, on the gyno tissue just jiggling in that video. Plain as day. Go look at my short. You can see it clearly. So I have gotten basically nothing special out of this. Worse gyno, broke D game, maybe some better body composition. I just don't, I don't, right now I'm not attributing anything positive to the mint. And the best way to confirm if I'm right or wrong is to keep all of the other doses basically where they are and pluck the mint out. If things get substantially better, then, at a, then, then the mint was actually holding me back. If things start, if my, if my physique starts going into the toilet, if I start rapidly losing weight, if I start rapidly lo losing body composition, then we'll know that the mint was doing something remarkable. And if, if the change is so, is so heartbreaking to take, then maybe that will convince me to reinvest in the mint at a lower dose until I can get it dialed in. 
But I'm going to have to see some pretty remarkable, pretty negative effects happen to my physique when I take the mint out to, to, to have any evidence that it was doing anything positive at all, period. It is rapidly beginning to become apparent to me that somebody somewhere is profiting from the from the promotion of this drug. I said this before I even took the mint that Ryan Russo made a video about it. He basically said all the same things I'm saying. It's a bottle of fucking estrogen. It's a totally miserable drug. There's no way to manage it. He had nothing but negative things to say about it until somebody who was producing mint sponsored him and then he came back with a different attitude. And I've had people pushing this drug on me and and I still to this day cannot figure out why. It's just, I, I, the first time I looked at it on paper, I was like, this is the stupidest drug I've ever seen. I, I mean, like, everything that you want to say about mint, you could just as easily say about, uh, what's that drug I was bringing? I think it's uh, Mimburb. It's oral, oral, um, oral trimbolone. There's, there's basically an oral trimbolone that uh, they, they actually tested on, I believe it was, can uh, again, women with cancer. And it was so, yeah, this is check drops. I've got it backwards. Uh, it was so potent um, that even in very, very small doses, it was massively hepatotoxic. So yeah, there's like all kinds of drugs that you can come up with that have this crazy high anabolic to androgenic ratio, which is the whole selling point of mint. Oh, like five milligrams of mint is equal to 350 milligrams of, of testosterone. But it's like, who gives a shit if 500 milligrams, of, if five milligrams of mint is, is, disproportionately responsible for blowing up your estrogen and causing no end of nightmares and preventing you from running any other compounds that, that are tried and true and tested and dependable. If it makes it to where it's impossible for you to easily dial in and out of a cruise or a blast. I mean, it, it's just like the fucking redheaded stepchild in the room. It's absolutely, in my estimation, not worth fucking with. But we'll see. So I'm going to start tapering the mint off today. I got to get myself back into some kind of functional state. Again, I'm about to start work in T minus like eight days now. And so I can't be going through all of this, uh, this nightmare and starting a new job at the same time. It's just a total cluster. So what I'm going to do is continue my permablast minus the mint. Try to see if we can get to 225. If my, if my weight gain starts to flag and it stays there for any length of time, then we're going to start rolling all these doses back down and reassess from there. But, but starting today, I am phasing the mint out. I'm admitting defeat. Um, I, I just can't take, I can't take the abuse any longer in my estimation. Like I said, I'd have to be sitting at 265 right now for this to even be remotely worth it. If this drug would have to be putting me on the Olympia stage in six months time, or it is absolutely positively not worth the, the, the five weeks of hell that I've just been through. So as always, thank you for watching. We'll see you on the next one.